the night. Hey, he's in shooting the sleep. I wonder who will wake him. Bring him to his feet. Speak now or forever hold your peace. The There's a night where he's in shooting the sleep. I wonder who will wake him. Bring him to his feet. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Man, a vast 
just a way to be all across the land, all across the land of the next generation. This I want you to understand. The next generation. I don't wanna. some recording and we are hoping that this will reach uh, the Black Lives Matter, uh, Al Sharpton Action Network, and um, others, HLN and Rachel. On YouTube, Boston GDR, on the web, www.georgebostonryan.com, also www.bostongdr.com. I was called to Douglas, Georgia to address uh, an issue and uh, I'm going to let the people that I have here that I interviewed today speak concerning their individual cases. Uh, today is June the 20th, 2020. Uh, the camera is focused on uh, Douglas Commissioner Olivia Coley Pierce and uh, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, give an overview of this area, uh, members of law enforcement as you see it, and why you think these people came out today to address to get to free press. Okay, thank you, sir. As he has already stated, I am Commissioner Olivia Coley Pearson. I have served on the City of Douglas City Commission for 21 years. I am still currently serving. I represent the constituents of Ward 3. We are here today because there have been so many problems in our community that needs to be addressed. Some of the people that's here today, they are here to express where their, their loved ones have been killed uh, concerning law enforcement, whether that law enforcement officer was on, on duty or off duty. We have had complaints from surrounding counties, such as Ware County, where police killed uh, Ms. Roberson's son in Way Cross, Georgia. There are various issues going on within our county. When we had our justice, uh, our rally for justice a couple of Saturdays back, uh, there were families that were present who have lost that loved one by that person or those persons were incarcerated at the Coffee County uh, Jail. We are faced with very, very many issues. A few years back, I was maliciously prosecuted by the district attorney here. Last, give us a name. George Barnhill and his assistant DAs, John Rumper and Ian Sansop, were very instrumental into prosecuting me maliciously. There are very many issues that, that goes on. Just this past week, I received some phone calls from some constituents who say that uh, police harass their family members. Uh, we're just not standing for it. Uh, Commissioner Contable Carter Dern had called me about an issue that went on with another police officer and I just want to send a message that we are not tolerating injustice in the city of Douglas, Georgia. We have four African Americans that serve on the city council and three whites who serve on the city council. We have a majority black commission. There's no excuse for 
citizens in Douglas to be faced with racial inequalities, especially when you have a majority black commission. It's time that people get involved. It's time that people speak up and stand up for justice. Enough is enough. As you all are aware, we've had people who had the knee on their neck and died, George Floyd. There have been so many other cases, right down in Brunswick, Georgia, Ahmaud Aubrey, right here in Douglas, Georgia, Lalesta Johnson, who case was not handled properly. We are seeking justice. This is why we are here today. We demand justice, and we will not settle for less. So Al Sharpton, Rachel Maddow, Oprah Winfrey, all of you who have been getting involved with the publicity cases, we here in rural Georgia want your assistance because we need help also, and we will not take it anymore. So that's why we are here today. And I appreciate Mr. George Boston Rhines for his coverage. He has been on the scene for years trying to cover what others don't cover in our rural communities. So Mr. Rhines, my head is off to you today. I applaud you because you have fought the fight and you have not given up and your efforts are really appreciated. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Commissioner Olivia Coley Pearson, but you said something that I must return to. I would like for you to thank the people who stood with you during that bogus voter fraud case of yours. And the news media, I think it was Level Alive, actually news from Atlanta, yes. came down, but nobody connected the dots with all those other cities where all these other 30 cities was caught up in voter fraud just like you. But no Rachel Maddow, no Al Sharpton, no major news media will come and connect the dots with all these troubled areas. So I just, I'm gonna live, give you this space to thank the people who was instrumental in assisting you of being exonerated on all those bogus charges of voter fraud that were brought up against you. Thank you, Ms. Ryan, for reminding me of that. Yes, sir. During my, my ordeal, there were numerous people who came to my aid. There were people here from my community who came out and supported me. A uh, couple of, two, of the, two or three of the churches who got together and, and provided financial assistance to me. We had the Southern Center for Human Rights who stepped in at the end of, well, who stepped in at the second, the retrial. Because not only was I tried once, I was tried twice by the unprofessional and ridiculous district attorney's office here. The first trial was a hung jury. So the second time I got ready to go to trial, Southern Center for Human Rights came to me out of nowhere and they rendered aid and provided assistance and, 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 and represented me and, and got me acquitted from, the, from those bogus charges. There was, initially there was a, a, a law firm under the leadership of Supreme North Carolina Supreme Court. Uh, she's now the Supreme Court Justice in North Carolina. Her office provided assistance on the first trial. So I just like to thank everybody who played a part. Uh, Mr. Andy Parodi with Eleven Alive, he came down and he did interview me. He covered the story. So. There have been people instrumental in seeking, helping me to seek justice and to get justice. But as Mr. Ryan stated, the dots have not been connected because there are so many other cases where people have been prosecuted for voter fraud. And, and it's a shame and it's a disgrace. But you all know the story. You all see that we have a governor who was Secretary of State then and was allowed to remain Secretary of State while he ran for the office of governor. That was a breach of jurisprudence in our, in our nation that should not have ever been allowed. How can you remain the person over the Secretary of State office, which is the office that governs elections, and you are seeking the highest office in Georgia, governor? 
It's a shame and a disgrace. And we need people all around this country to speak out against these injustices that we are suffering. You hear about the big cases, the big cities. You don't hear about small towns like Douglas, Georgia, Coffee County, Georgia. So I'm asking, I'm pleading, I'm begging. We need you all to come to Douglas, contact Douglas, citizens of Douglas, Coffee County, and see and find out the hell that we go through and catch. Olivia, can you help us paint this picture before the other lady, Miss Francine, speak? about what you just said, you call for help from outside sources. But can you address the local news media here in Douglas and Coffee County? Can you rely on them for getting the story out to the general public? No, sir, Mr. Rice. The local news media cannot be relied upon here in Douglas. As you recall, Mr. Rice, about 2012, we had a meeting right here at the Coley Center. The purpose of that meeting was to try to bring the community together. Well, when the local news media got information that we were having that meeting here, they distorted the news and reported that we were having a meeting to kill white people. So no, sir, the local news media here, Douglas Now News, Douglas Enterprise, we cannot rely upon them. We cannot rely upon them. When they report stories, they distort stories. They don't tell the truth. So we need outside media coverage in addition to you, sir, to get the truth out there and have the truth told. Because the people deserve to know the truth. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I, I'm so in depth with this until your mistrial would not have been a mistrial if it not, was not for a young black juror. Yes, sir. Who said what? She said not guilty. But what and did she say they put her through? She said they put her through her hell. They threatened to take her to jail if she did not vote guilty. If she didn't vote guilty, she was threatened to be jailed. But she stood her ground. And I got to give her her props, Lanisha Armour. Lanisha Armour, you are, God had you in that room. Because I cried out when I had to go through a trial the second time. And he told me, that juror that stood with you saying not guilty, I had her there. So you were the whole arm of God for me that day, young lady. And to God be the glory for you. Because had it not been for you, they would have incarcerated me for nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you.